Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. I come to you every Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock, and I have the opportunity to bring you some interesting uh, interviews with uh, with people that have got stories to tell. And tonight, I want to introduce you to Stacey Burns. Stacey is an entrepreneur in Port Perry, Ontario. She is the survivor of domestic violence. Uh, she's a single mom of four uh, people, four kids. Um, she's had her obstacles and fears, uh, but they didn't hold her back from success and as she says, to push her through boundaries. She carries her brand, Stay Beautiful, to remind everyone that despite your pain or the story you created, that story that created it, it does not define you. Beauty is not in the face, beauty is in the light in your heart. That's a wonderful saying. Stacy Burns, welcome to our show. How are you tonight? I am wonderful, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you for asking. Um, so. Tell me a little bit about your story. What uh, what what happened? What happened? Um, I very young in my life, I had been abused, and they usually say that when something happens in your life when you're young, it changes how you view the world and the people in it. And then, as you become a teenager, something else could happen, or somebody says something to you that changes how you feel about yourself. And then once you hit an adult, other things could happen that hardwire you for the rest of your life. And there's points in life where you think you can't do it. Um, the pain, the hardships you've been through, you feel like you're not worth anything and you're never gonna make it. And you get put in a box trying to please everybody and do what everybody wants you to do, looking for that love, that recognition and you're not going to find it that way. It's going within, finding your voice, finding who you are. That's the only time you actually are true to yourself. So this uh, violence that you encountered was both when you were a child and when you were an adult? Yes. Um, when I got married, I was married to a gentleman that had abused women, had gone after many women. He ended up murdering a woman in Airdrie, Alberta. And he then took his own life, fearing he would be in prison for the rest of his life. And we were in hiding for many years. They relocated us. And I mean, he should have been deemed a dangerous offender, but instead he was um, exiled from Ontario and in Alberta. And we lived in fear every single day. We had Deaver's alarms through our home with lights and watching cars that passed. And the PTSD that grew from that and grew from the children always in fear. It, it was very sad how the story ended, but we didn't have to run anymore and we weren't afraid anymore. Um, it, it's very difficult to be able to learn how to love yourself the way you should have been loved. And it was a long journey and I did it. I, I let go, I forgave, we struggled. I ended up taking a course last year with um, um, a gentleman named Jacob Rakowski and it was about manifesting and creating the life you want and believing in yourself. Um, and I took the course and I thought, you know what? I've been scared of everything. And I picked up and I went and seen this beautiful home. And I said, you know what? It is every business I've ever wanted to do in my life and that I have done wedding decorating, events, retreats, um, several businesses that I, I'm into now. And I moved my children into this amazing, amazing equestrian horse ranch this in October. And I thought, you know what? It's time for me to grow. It's time for me to step out of fear and not follow the herd because a lot of times we do that. A lot of times we follow what everyone tells us to do and we don't look for our superhero. We don't nobody realizes you you have a superpower somewhere inside of you and you just get so caught up in life and I had to find mine and it's unbelievable it's unbelievable once you realize your passion and you work towards it you are unstoppable so is that what uh, got you through the situation is is finding your passion finding your superhero as you called it yeah finding your superhero um I had a mentor that used to tell me Wake up in the morning and decide who you're going to be today and be that person. You, um, you wake up in the morning and so many people are tired. And I mean, tired isn't just being tired. You, you're usually you're dehydrated. There's something. It's waking up and having that energy. 
and saying, you know what, today I'm going to conquer this day. How you decide, it's all about decisions and choosing, how you decide you're going to hit that day is usually how the day turns out. And he used to say to me, who are you today? And I would pick something and I would, it's, it's like acting. Okay, well, how is that person? That person's powerful. That person's determined. That person's loving. It's loving everyone where they're at and not having expectations. You, you, can, only, you can only speak for yourself. You can only let your light shine. You can't change people. So how you change yourself is what's important. How you change yourself is what's important. We're chatting tonight with Stacey Burns, who is uh, an entrepreneur in Port Perry. Uh, she's a survivor of domestic violence, and she's got a story to tell. We're going to take a break for some messages and come back more with Stacey in just a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour, Saga 960. We're chatting tonight with Stacey Burns. She is an entrepreneur in Port Perry. Um, she's a survivor of domestic violence, and it sounds like the domestic violence occurred um, a couple different times uh, in her uh, in her life. She's a single mom of four, and she wants to tell her story about her obstacles and fears and how she overcame them. And uh, and it sounds uh, like uh, this brand that you've created, Stay Beautiful, um, which is beauty is not in the face, beauty is in the light in your heart, really is what resonates for you. Is that is that correct? Very much so. Very much so. I um, So many people put a stigma on beauty and everybody's beautiful. Everybody has something inside of them that they can give to the world and they, not everyone has found it yet. And I've walked around my life um, since going through all the violence that I've been through in my life saying, life is beautiful. Um, you're, you're, you could fail at something every day. And I heard a story about how someone asked, a gentleman asked his daughter every day, would you fail at today? And it's being able to accept your failures and still push through it still know that you could go through those boundaries. And especially through this time with COVID and people, I've gone through it too, being shell-shocked, being in my home, having my daughter stuck to my side every second going, oh, I love you. <laughs> um, it's, it's difficult. And if I could reach out and touch everybody, that's what I'd want to do. And, you know, tell people, you are love. You, we can do this. And... It's so simple, but so difficult for everybody. What mistakes have you made along the way? Mistakes, not believing in me. I, someone once told me um, when I was married that I was never gonna be anything. And it stuck to you. And sometimes when people say things to you in life, you don't realize it subconsciously, it sinks into your head, stays there. And I would go to do something and someone would say, I remember my mother saying, every time you want to do something, your shoelace becomes untied. And I would feel that I'd get scared. And I had um, a gentleman who worked with me that said, Stacy, can you stop helping everybody else? And can you start helping yourself now? Um, and I did that for so long that now I found the trick to help myself and help everybody along the way. Um, and the trick I is? just love you, you know you can carry people with you you don't it's not about so many people want to win but you want i want other people to win with me everybody is in this rat race to you know be better than everybody else let's just be great together and it's possible to do that um you were abused as a child yes and then you were abused again in uh, your marriage? Yes. Is there a connection? Um, I don't think there's a connection. I think that it, it's funny because they, women usually say, for some reason, you draw abusive people. Once, you, once you've been in that cycle, you seem to draw those people to you. I don't know how that works. Um, but as a child being abused, you, you feel like you're not worthy. I, re I remember it coming back to me when I was 26, 27, 28, wanting to rectify it, wanting to find out why. And I went to my abuser and I said, do you remember this? And he said, yes. And I wanted this closure. I wanted this, I'm sorry. I, it was like, I was looking for something. And sometimes you're not always gonna get what you're looking for, but I was able to say it, I was able to confront it, and I was able to release it and let it go. So I, do you think the fact that you uh, 
were abused once led you to look for someone else that would also abuse you? Is that what you say some people say? Yeah, I don't think you look for it. I think you lack in something. It's, I think there's, your personality changes where you're looking for love because you didn't get the love that you should have. You got a different form of, of you got, you, you were abused, you are broken. So you're looking for someone to love you. And sometimes that weakness, some people can see that weakness in you. Right. That you're always looking to be accepted. You're always, I think, cause when it happens as a child, you either get really, really strong and bitter and angry, or you become introverted looking for love that you didn't get. Now you spent uh, enough time with this uh, individual to, to have four children. So you spent some time with, with the abuser. I did. Um, I have three boys with him. My daughter is from another relationship, but I spent a lot of time with him. And with my oldest son, we watched the abuse and I tried to go to counseling and fix it. Uh, it didn't work. Um, and then I had the other two boys after that. I remember him saying, you know, you're going to have kids. Nobody's going to want you anymore. And they have a way of trying to break down that, that self-esteem. But I was strong enough to know that it wasn't true. I knew I was beautiful inside. I knew that once I made that breakthrough, I would find love one day. And it's not anything I search for. I love myself. I love my kids. Um, I love everyone. And it's incredible. I, I remember. But well, you must have obviously put up with it for a long time if you had, if it had occurred after the one child and then you had two more. I did. I think. Why did you, you get, put up with it? I think because you're afraid to be alone for a while. I think you sit there praying. I remember praying and, and rocking the baby saying, I just wish we could work it out. I wish we could get everything would go back to normal. And I remember my mother saying to me, you, you might be wishing for this, but you might not get what you're wishing for. You're going to get what you are supposed to have. You know, God isn't going to give you that if it's not good for you. And it took me a long time to accept that because I kept going back thinking, I don't want to be the woman who divorced. I don't want to be the woman who's left by herself raising kids alone. I don't. And we all, I think a lot of abused women keep going back financially, um, stability. I mean, he had an amazing job and you don't want people to know. So you keep going back. But and you say he went on to actually murder someone after you. Yeah, there were a few um, women that he had stalked and hurt. Um, mine, I mean, he tried to have one of my children kidnapped. Um, I went through an episode where the police had to come in as he was trying to strangle me. Um, and at the very end, he was in Alberta and there was a girl that worked for him and they were dating and he showed up at her home and neighbors had heard the fighting and he took her life. Um, she had a little girl, I guess um, she's with the parents or um, the ex-husband, beautiful little girl. And this woman lost her life because the system, the system, you know, three, he should have been a dangerous offender here, three violent offenses towards women. Um, and because they just thought the problem, okay, we'll put the problem out there to Alberta and it won't happen, but it continued there with a few other women and then a woman lost her life. So something wrong with the system, something oh. wrong with. Did you, did you have a sense that he was capable of murder when you were with him? Yeah. Um, really? I did going through paperwork, finding out more about his past. Um, I realized that he was dangerous though. I think with me, it was mild compared to the other women in his life, thankfully. And these um, other ones were after you or before you or both? A couple were before me and a few were after me. And, 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 and I don't even know if you can tell, answer this question, but like, what was it? Was it he was just a violent person or, or it was a desire for control or manipulation or like what, what caused this violent behavior and, and manipulation of females? Definitely. Um, from what I know, he was abused early in his life. He was a professional bodybuilder and I'm, he had found out later in life that he was bipolar, but he was also taking um, steroids and stuff like that, which definitely would have changed his whole demeanor. 
And I remember finding paperwork on him that said that he was unable to have normal relationships with family, with spouses. I guess they did a psychological analysis on him. And it was, ex it was very true that he was unable to do that. And it's sad because there's so many children in the couple of relationships he had that have all gone through what I've gone through, our kids. Um, I remember when he passed, they phoned me and they didn't know he had a wife in, in Ontario. And they said that they had his remains, they didn't realize that I was here and they were gonna send them to me. And I'm thinking, oh my, <laughs> what do I do? Um, you still, were you still married to him? Yes. Oh really, and what did you do? I said, okay. And I thought, you know what, every year, after everything, I'd still put up an ornament on the tree at Christmas time, one time a year, of him and the kids. And my oldest son used to say, what are you doing this for? And I said, because I pick one day a year, just one, where I thank him for my children. So I thought, go to where we were married, Scarborough Bluffs, release him into the water. Everybody has a story. Everybody has what they've gone through in life. Yes, he hurt people, but hurt people hurt people. And then his parents asked if they could have the remains. And I said, yes, most definitely. And they got sent up to them. Um, but I would have done it for the kids just to show that, you know what? This is life. And things what's, what, what's the lesson, if there is any lesson? What, what would you do differently? Or what would you tell other females that are in abusive relations? Don't lose yourself that you're worth more. Um, you can't stay because a lot of people stay and think, okay, it's gonna change or it's gonna get better. Percentage maybe does, but there is a chance you can lose your life. And I came very close to losing mine and someone lost theirs. So I think in these abusive situations, women, we're strong. We might be broken at certain moments, but we're strong. And the damage is usually inflicted on the kids. The, the kids kind of get pushed aside almost like thinking they can handle it. You know, tomorrow's gonna be different. There's not enough resources, I think, for the kids, because I know I have my two youngest boys, one is fine, one isn't. Um, I don't think that the parent, the mother, like they protect their children, but the children get damaged and they carry it on into their families and their lives and the cycle doesn't stop. Was he abusive to the children as well as you? Um, emotionally and verbally. And that's what ended up making me leave. And I, I tried to fix it for the sake of keeping the family together. And then I thought, you know what? I can't, I can't. So let me come back again and ask you if you were speaking to an abused woman right now, what would you tell her? Don't, if it's that bad, don't wait because there might not be a tomorrow. Don't wait to leave. And, and yet you got through it and lots of people you say stay because of the money and because of the wanting the family together and, and hoping that things will change. Um, what got you through this? You said it was your passion and your, and your, your superhero, but, but that sounds like it didn't come to the end. What got you through in the middle? My kids just realizing that I deserve more to life. I, that I was beautiful inside that I couldn't, I didn't want to feel like this was the end of my life and this is how it was going to be for the rest of my life. And my mom, who was my rock and she's not here anymore, but she was there for me. I mean, we crammed in her little apartment when I had left him and she was an angel on this earth. And she just kept telling me every day, you know, you are better than this. You can do anything. And I did, I, if she's looking down now, she would be like, oh my goodness, Stacy, where are you now? <laughs> did, your, uh, did your family and friends see what was happening? Um, yeah, and, and it's funny because the support really wasn't there. Like they kind of, I don't know, it was almost like, okay, well, this is the life you're living. You know, when you're done with that, we're here. So I didn't, I didn't have anyone there really helping me through it every day. I had to do it on my own. Were you hiding it or did, did they know? Um, 
they kind of knew at the beginning, everybody kind of liked him because most men are very charming. Um, men that have issues with violence are very charming individuals. Everybody loves them. Um, my mom knew, a couple of people knew, but they kind of just were like, do what you got to do. I think if I had someone pushing me, maybe I would have left sooner. But you know what? It's okay. It's okay that I didn't because I wouldn't become the woman I am today if I did things differently. I wouldn't have gone through the trials and survived them in order to help other people go through them. I think- so You're actually saying that you're happy that you went through those because you're a better person or a different person now? I'm, I'm happy that I handled it the way I handled it because I think there's a, big, a bigger picture coming for me. I think it's about healing and helping people heal. And helping, really, and helping people heal. And you've got this equestrian center. Tell me what your dreams are and your ambitions with this equestrian center. Um, I have this beautiful home right now. And am I able to screen share for you? Big part? Am I able to show you the home? Sure. Right. So Stacy, what is it that uh, we're looking at? We're looking at a picture of your home? Yes, um, it is a beautiful home. It's on an equestrian horse ranch. It has an event room that um, hosts weddings and events. Very excited about it. Um, there are horses that run the grounds. There's a woman down below me that has about 30 horses. And the weddings and events that happen here, the brides are, have taken pictures with the horses. It's stunning. I used to decorate um, years ago for weddings and absolutely love it. It is going to, it has started, um, once COVID lifts, it will be a retreat to help women and children that have gone through stuff like this. And I wanna reach out to the entire world <laughs> and share um, this beautiful healing home. I, I'm- And how I've, big is your event space? The event, well, the event hosts 60 to 80 people, the event room. <laughs> the grounds hold 250 people for outdoor events and weddings. The retreat, I, I, we have a, a hot tub, we have a wonderful spa room. I want children to be able to come here and, and women and men, because abuse is a human issue, not a, not a woman's issue. Um, it's my dream home. It's everything I've wanted to do to help people. Excellent. All in one place. And if people want to uh, contact you, uh, if they want to stay or have their wedding there, how do they do that? Um, they can look for me on Facebook, Stacy Burns. They can also go on to Sweet Stace XX on Instagram. I am on TikTok, <laughs> Stay Beautiful Manor. Um, they can find me, Coffee Mom, on Instagram. I, because I want to turn it into a cafe as well through the summertime where people can come sit outside, watch the horses. I have never been so excited over anything in my life. Excellent. And and so where, where are you going to be in the future? Running this? That's the future? This is my future. I want to have a place that's my home and that can be anybody else's home where they can come and just know that they are loved every day, every day. I um, have looked into, I have a friend of mine that's involved in human trafficking and there's so many arms you can, I have like so many passions to help out and it, it, it's about rising together. And I know, I know this is going to be unbelievable. And once this COVID moves a little bit, look out. <laughs> uh, Stacey I, it, Burns, thank you so much for sharing your, uh, almost like a Phoenix story with us about how you came from such a, a terrible situation uh, and, uh, and, and an abusive situation and found your passion, found your superhero, and uh, now launching this uh, business. Uh, stay beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We've been chatting with Stacey Burns, who is a survivor of, uh, of an abusive relationship. Um, and she's turned her life around and has launched a business where she's offering event space for weddings and, uh, and uh, celebrations. And also in the future, a retreat for people that are in comparable challenging situations to Stacey. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to take a break and come back with another interview in just a minute. Stay with us.